in game one. She had 18 rebounds. Nine of those were on the offensive but side. But Carolyn, watch out. There is another Aaliyah in this game. It's Aaliyah Goodman, and she is so smart. Uh, the point guard for Oregon State, 24 points in the first round against Florida State. Both of these teams have been mainstays in the Sweet 16, but only one can advance. Well, you'll watch Oregon State with the ball screen defense. Just check out first, how is South Carolina going to guard it? Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. They're brought to you by Capital One. This has been the consistent lineup for South Carolina. They got a lot of production, not only from Aaliyah Boston, but from Victoria Saxton down low in that opening round win against Mercer. Yeah, Saxton had 20 points in the first round game. They were just dominant inside. Quick bucket from the freshman. It's Sasha Goforth out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's going to be fun watching these two teams play. Both like to play quick. They like to push in transition and really score before the defense gets set. Destiny Henderson with the floater. Her first points in the NCAA tournament this year. You Oregon know, State starting five. We mentioned Aaliyah Goodman at the point. There's some talented freshmen on this team. Sasha Goforth, one of those. Sasha Goforth, the McDonald's All-American that came in. She played really well against Florida State. Aggressive, 14 points. Aaliyah Boston for three. She's been really successful from range in the postseason. She's three for five. Yeah, but starting out this game, I've seen Aaliyah Boston spend a lot of time at the high post. I would check her out down on the block first, see how Oregon State's going to try to defend her. This Oregon State team got a big win over Florida State in the opening round. They'll throw it up to Taylor Jones, who gets behind Boston. Zaya Cook in traffic, somehow finds Boston down low. Victoria Saxton offensive board. South Carolina's really good at getting a second chance. Boston through traffic. Bucket won't drop, but we'll see her at the charity stripe. But you watch Boston as she posts up. Victoria Saxton, though, comes in and crowds her. There's no room for Aaliyah Boston to make her move. Uh, Victoria Saxton needs to space out and let Boston go one-on-one. -on -one. The foul was on Taylor Jones. Oregon State comes in having won nine of its last 11. They've got three ranked wins over that time. That's how they entered the NCAA tournament. You see Jones staying high, trying to keep Aaliyah Boston away from blocking shots on drives. Destiny Henderson will push in transition, but the Oregon defense got back in time. Scott Ruick says this team is playing some of its best basketball of the season. They just needed that time to get on the court and play together. There was a point in, this, in January they were shut down for about 29 days. Well, and it's hard to really get the rhythm in the motion offense and really understanding the defense of Oregon State without that continuity of practice. Got some young players, too, had to replace some very talented players. Remember, Destiny Slocum made the transfer to Arkansas. Kayla Pivik, who was such an outstanding player for them, she's gone. And Aaliyah Goodman, the senior point guard, has done a terrific job of keeping this Beaver team together. Taya Corsdale got a hand on that one. It's been five straight misses for the Gamecocks. Leah Goodman loves the ball screen. 
Well, in that time she had space. Destiny Henderson went under it. We'll see if Aaliyah Boston, if she adjusts. But there's Zaya Cook getting started early. She got off to a slow start in that first game against Mercer. You know, South Carolina has a similar story. They lost some key pieces last year, too, just like Oregon State did with the graduations of Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. They've been having to find themselves as well, but we saw that switch click in the SEC tournament. See Boston. The ball moving before she can come to it. South Carolina has got to be patient and let Boston make herself available. Instead, they take the outside shot. Taylor Jones and Aaliyah Boston really battling inside. Forsdale short. And Aaliyah Boston will go back to the free throw line when we come back, trying to find a rhythm in this one. We're tied. Regular season and the tournament, of course, they won the national championship in 2017, one of two Final Four appearances. And on Sunday against Mercer, she picked up her 500th career win. Last season, she was named the Naismith and AP National Coach of the Year. When you talk to Don Staley, she said, I know what success feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like. And when she was at Temple, she brought in a great player by the name of Candace Dupree that went on to play in the WNBA. And then when she got to South Carolina, Elisa Welch was the first South Carolina player to really stay home that started to attract the talent to allow the building of success at South Carolina. You know, players like Asia Wilson come into the program and just make a huge difference. Now a statue of Asia Wilson out on South Carolina's campus. Yelena Mitrovich has come in the game because Oregon State has a little bit of foul trouble. Taylor Jones with two fouls. That's big. They need her inside to go against Boston. Henderson taking the baseline, misses the layup. Check out the ball handler right now. It's Talia von Olhofen. She is a freshman, an extreme freshman. Just joined the program back in January, but has made a big difference for Oregon State. But Aaliyah Goodman still reading when to use, when to reject those ball screens and creating opportunities for herself. Now, Leah Goodman is their main ball handler. Von Olhoffen has become that second ball handler, handler that they needed. Leah Boston stepping around Mitrovic. Well, and Boston was able to go there and score, but when she catches the basketball, Victoria Saxon is cutting right down on her, and I don't understand that. We saw that pop up a few times in the SEC tournament. It brings that defender over to Boston. Watch Boston catch it on the block. Now, Victoria Saxon is at the high post, and I can understand the dive, but you've got to dive away to see whether your defense is going to go to Boston or it's going to stay with you. If you go close, you've got allowing your defender to defend two people. Taya Corsdale was called for the foul of Oregon State, on Oregon State. It's Destiny Littleton. And Bree Beal cleared out so Boston could take the block. That's a great point. The clearing out, the giving her space to go one-on-one -on -one because she's got the talent to put it on the deck and make the defense pay. Aaliyah Goodman just needs to see it go through. This is an outstanding three-point shooting team. They're first in the nation in three-point percentage. Now, South Carolina is going to have to make the decision. Either you don't allow her to use the screen, ice it, make Goodman be a passer, but you can't give her room. Von Olhoffen will come down with the rebound. And that'll be a turnover.
and what a ride it's been for Talia von Olhoffen. Didn't get to play her high school season, so her family reached out to Scott Ruick and said, can we, can she join the team? And he said, well, you know, I just, there's so many different variables. He wasn't really sure about it at first, but props to her for coming in. This is a complicated system to learn, especially defensively. Well, she played her first college game only after about two or three practices. But when she came in, the first shot she made, it was an NBA three. No fear. Inside Dimitrovich working on Boston. One minute left in the quarter. Letitia and me here was calling for it. Bree Beal will pull it back out. Destiny Littleton. Okay, South Carolina needs to take a look at when you're taking shots, where is Aaliyah Boston? If she's heading up to the high post, probably not a good time to take a shot unless you're wide open because she's moving away from a rebounding opportunity. Aaliyah Goodman biding her time on the ball screen. Corsdale in the corner, no. South Carolina can take the last shot. And you see Aaliyah Boston calling the play. She's like a point guard at the center spot. Such a smart player, but South Carolina's missed its last four. Can they fix it? They will on a layup from Destiny Henderson. She's got her groove back. South Carolina up by one. Carolyn Peck, right now Oregon State shooting 40% from the field compared to 28% for Carolina. Well, a lot of the guards are taking shots for South Carolina right now. Very different than how they played against Mercer in the first round. Victoria Saxton with the range. She's coming off a 20-point performance, a tighter career high. Ami here, second chance won't go. And Bree Beal is all over the boards right now for the Gamecocks. Already seven rebounds for Beal. What do you think about the shot selection right now? For South Carolina, very uncharacteristic. It got away from what they did so well in the SEC tournament, playing through the post and really hunting Paint points. Von Olhoffen, some help from Mitrovic. She's in the game because Taylor Jones has two fouls. Mitrovic is 6-9. Without Boston in the game, she could dominate inside. Zaya Cook elevates. South Carolina now one for its last nine. You know, I was looking at this matchup. I wondered after South Carolina and how they played against Mercer, dominating inside, post play, Boston, Saxton, Ami here, really made it easy to score. But it was the guards that didn't score. They had to sacrifice. And I, I was curious, would they come out getting a little shot happy in the first half? They did so in the first quarter. When will they settle in? Offensive foul on Leticia Ami here. Ellie Mack takes the charge. Well, you can see all four NIT quarterfinals. They're coming to the ESPN networks on Thursday, beginning with Mississippi State in Richmond at 6 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Cook almost lost it. They'll get it to Saxton at the elbow. Back to Cook. Finally, a shot will drop. South Carolina was shooting 
Well, Cook is so good when she just takes that one dribble, that one, two dribble, step into your shot, pull up on balance, that's money. Mitrovic got caught underneath the basket, but she'll draw the foul anyway. And it's against Victoria Saxton. Leah Boston was already waiting at the scorer's table to check in. She's got eight points on the night. But Courtney, you were talking about Talia Von Ohoffen coming to this Oregon State basketball team. What does she bring? Well, she's another ball handler that Scott Ruick really needed. And so when you have Aaliyah Goodwin on one side and then you have Von Ohoffen on the other and the decision-making ability of this freshman is so impressive. Yeah, Talia von Olhofen coming in, graduating early. The hesitancy, I mean, I think it was it was valid because you wonder how a freshman is gonna come in mid-season and adapt. And she is just built for this. Scott Ruick told us that she has been waiting her whole career for this moment to come in early to have this opportunity. Graduated high school early, didn't have a high school season, so why not come out and play? And she has made a big difference as this Oregon State team has found itself. Well, both her parents played college ball. Her father played in the NFL. So if there's anybody that could prepare a young woman to be ready when she stepped on the campus as a college freshman, it would be Talia. Back to work, Boston. Where did she get the ball and where did she finish? On the block and in the paint make Oregon State have to adjust their defense. Oh, Boston got called for the cheap one there. That's gonna be but when first. Boston gets the ball down low, you give her space, let her go to work, one-on-one. -on -one. And more times than not, she's gonna come out with a bucket. Boston, the only player on the Naismith Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year finalist list. Now Oregon State struggling to score. And that's a travel on Zaya Cook. The Beavers hit 55% of their shots in that opening round win against Florida State, just 35% from the field right now. And both of these teams are trying to really figure out each other on how to go against that aggressive defense that both teams are applying. South Carolina's had three turnovers over its last five possessions. Victoria Saxon's got some long arms. Well, and her first response to get rid of the ball, who'd she give it to? Aaliyah Boston to start the break. With authority, Corsdale is going to go down. That'll be her second. But all day long, give the ball to Boston and then space out. See where the defense is going to be. Because understand this too, Aaliyah Boston is a willing passer. So if your defense collapses on her, she'll find you. But you've got to space out and make yourself an available target. Boston, a first team All-American, the SEC Co-Defensive Player of the Year. And on both of those, Naismith Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year finalists. Look, when you're a finalist for Defensive Player of the Year and a finalist for Player of the Year, wouldn't that give you a hand up on being selected as the total all-around Player of the Year? I'm pretty sure that we have texted about this, and I have said that exact same thing, so yes. <laughs> so I'm listening, Lyle. I'm listening to you. <laughs> Look, all four of those on that list for Naismith Player of the Year are talented individuals. But Aaliyah Boston, she's so smart, and she's such a presence down low. Well, it takes two or three players to really stop her. You see Oregon State has adjusted. They've gone to a zone to try to slow down paint production. 
we mentioned the other three on that Naismith Player of the Year list. We've gotten to see all of them in action. We've seen Ryan Howard in action twice. Unfortunately, Kentucky not able to make it to the Sweet 16, but you've got Boston, Paige Beckers, and Dana Evans on that list as well. All very talented players, but what sets Boston apart? Her versatility her strength, her dominance that she has inside. When you look at a scouting report and you're guarding or you're going against Aaliyah Boston, you have to worry about how you're gonna try to stop her on the offensive side, but then you've gotta figure out how you can score because she's a shot blocker. She has great presence defensively and she can defend in the paint and away from the basket as well. Of Boston touched that one last. It'll be Oregon State ball. Beavers in a scoring drought right now. Over two, well, Don Staley over two minutes and 30 Aaliyah. seconds without a bucket. We're taking Aaliyah Boston out to steal some rest before the media timeout. Sasha, go forth with the spin. She's an Oregon State Beaver. And they're not over either. Down the stretch to get to the Sweet 16. You got to win or you go home. That's the case in this one, of course. Either South Carolina or Oregon State will move on to face Georgia Tech. Henderson, the swipe, the score. You know, in game one, it was all about the post play. Right now, it's the guards that are getting it done for South Carolina. Saxton got a piece of that. She's showing her length. Gamecocks have scored seven straight. You gotta remember that Oregon State playing without Taylor Jones, she's picked up two fouls early. That's the center for Oregon State. Another takeaway, it's Leticia Me here. And Scott Ruiz got to talk about this. Nine straight points for South Carolina. Well, South Carolina turned up the heat using their length. Leticia me here. She was stutter stepping. I thought we were going to get a dunk in the second round of the NCAA tournament. So timeout taken. South Carolina an 11 to 1 run. Look, South Carolina last year, they haven't forgotten. They were the number one team in the nation. They went 32 and 1, undefeated in the SEC. They won the SEC regular season and the tournament championship. Nine weeks ranked number one. They were on track to be that top team in the NCAA tournament. They lost two outstanding players. Both were WNBA first round picks. They don't forget that. They want to advance to the Sweet 16 and keep that run going that they didn't get last year. And Aaliyah Boston talked about how those two seniors, Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan, really put their print on that team last year that put them in the position, had it not been shut down because of COVID, for them to make a run for the national championship. And Aaliyah Boston said she came into this tournament with them in mind. And what they are doing this year is for those seniors that didn't get an opportunity to play for a championship last season. Don says the train keeps moving. The South Carolina train trying to keep on moving to the Sweet 16.
Leticia Ami here wanted that rebound and she gets fouled. Scott Ruick has put Taylor Jones back in the game playing with those two fouls. This is the first. Well, coming up at the half, the AT&T 5G in the studio with Maria Taylor. Baylor will also check in on the Baylor Lady Bears. They're trying to make it to the Sweet 16 again. Plus, Caitlin Clark, just a fantastic performance in her second NCAA tournament game of her career. Michigan sends the Lady Vols home. That's coming up and more at the half with Maria. Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes sending the Kentucky Wildcats back in today. About 35 points, Miss Clark. She's just a freshman. She Doesn't is. Like it. Uh uh. She is ridiculous. Saxton's defense all over it again. And a be here travel. Four turnovers by South Carolina approaching the two minute mark here in the second quarter. Oregon State's missed its last eight shots. Sasha, go for it, coughs it up. Oh, Henny thrives here. She's quick. She's quick. Well, the defensive pressure of South Carolina, one on one, it's made it very difficult for Oregon State to create one on one. They're going to have to run players off screens or use some of their ball screen action. Taylor Jones. Four points for Jones. She's been in foul trouble. Still out there with two fouls. She just forced her way to the basket. L.A. Leticia, me here. Now the South Carolina has slowed down just a bit with their offense. Patience, great post patience there by me here. South Carolina, it stays with the Beavers. And Oregon State is a good shooting team. They shoot 46% from the field. Tonight, 31% and just 11% from three. But I'll tell you, South Carolina can't relax because Oregon State can get hot, and especially from the three. Gamecocks looking for one shot, about a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. This is Zaya Cook. I'm gonna tell you, Zaya Cook, she's a highlight waiting to happen. It got blocked. The freshman go for it. South Carolina ends the half on a 14 to two run. Oregon State struggling to score. Only one of these teams will move on to the Sweet 16 to face Georgia Tech. Paint as well. And then South Carolina, they turned up their defense. It's scoring in transition. That's who South Carolina is. Oregon State only had 18 points in the first half. The fewest in any half this season. They scored five points only in the second quarter. So now we'll see, see how if Oregon State goes back to having Aaliyah Goodman working off ball screens and create opportunities where she can either get scoring opportunity pulling up or get her three-point shot.
So the call is on Victoria Saxton. It was her first. Another steal. South Carolina picked their defense up in that second quarter. And that all starts with the length, the anticipation of Victoria Saxton. She'll deflect it, keep it in bounds, and then the Gamecocks are off and running. Oregon State finished the half, only hitting one of their last 10 shots. Goodman trying to get, in, get them out of it. Destiny Henderson gave up the three for a better shot. She is making up for lost time. We talked about she did not score in that first game against Mercer. I expected her to try to bring some production today. 18 to two run for Carolina. There's gonna be a foul down low. Oh, that's on Taylor Jones. That is her third. Well, Oregon State has some work to do to get back in this one, but they are a great three-point shooting team. In fact, they're the best percentage-wise in the nation, and Aaliyah Goodman is second in the nation. But you look tonight, Oregon State, one for 10 from the three-point line. Aaliyah Goodman, has she's the one that made that one three. Oregon State's gonna need more of that to get themselves back into this ballgame. Scott Ruick has commented and complimented this team on their ball movement and how much faster this team moves than any team that he's coached has allowed them to shoot for a higher percentage across the board, but they have struggled to score tonight. They've hit one of their last 12 shots. That foul was on Bree Beal. Well, you see that what with the pressure that South Carolina is putting on Oregon State on the perimeter, Scott Rooks trying to go inside and establish Taylor Jones and just try to creep into this South Carolina lead two points at a time. Jones has got to be careful. She's got three fouls. Oh, and a a turnover for South Carolina. That's their fifth. Now what South Carolina's got to do is recognize the defense of Oregon State. There are three players in the lane. Bree Bill was wide open. If she was just patient and see if the defense was going to rotate and space out to her, not move too fast. Let the game just kind of come to you. Just four points for the Beavers over the last nine and a half minutes. Jones kicks back out to Corsdale, back inside. Jones over Boston. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one right now. Jones is able to finish if Oregon State is just patient in getting her the basketball inside. the spacing for South Carolina. There's three defenders in the paint for Oregon State. And Boston gets fouled. Aaliyah Boston right now with 13 points. Just one rebound. She didn't have any rebounds in the first half. I got to believe that's got to be a focus of Oregon State. If there's anybody that you need to box out, it's Aaliyah Boston. Because if she gets a second chance opportunity, forget about it. Oregon State might be in trouble now, though. Taylor Jones, four fouls, just 11 minutes of action. Oh, and Scott Ruick's going to leave her out there. There's a sub at the table. And Yelena Mitrovic checks in. We'll tune in Friday when the Men's Ice Hockey Championship gets underway in Bridgeport at 1 Eastern on ESPN2 and on the ESPN app. Don't forget to visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Go for it a little short. Cook is also short. 
she could have, she just didn't get herself on balance for that pull-up jumper. Just got her momentum going a little bit too much, and then she short short wristed that shot. Aliyah Boston whistled for the foul, trying to work on Mitrovic, who has checked in to replace Taylor Jones. Second on Boston. Boston's got to be careful. You've got to have discipline there when the ball's coming into the post. You don't need to reach through. Ellie Mack. Brie Beal has been a rebounding machine. That's her eighth board. Well, that's what she's in the game for, a big guard that can mix it up on the glass. Victoria Saxton still doing her work on the glass as well. You know, we talked to Aaliyah Boston after that first round win, and we asked her about Victoria Saxton. She had 20 points. She said, isn't she a queen? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Aaliyah Boston has a name, nickname, a description for every player on the team. She was so proud of Victoria Saxton after that first game against, me, against Mercer. And she should be. I mean, they tried to take away Destiny Henderson and Zaya Cook and left Victoria Saxton with some options, and she delivered. Well, that's the thing. With all these different weapons in South Carolina, every opponent tries to take away something different. But if South Carolina is patient, they can find those different options. Tisha, me here double teamed. Around Corsdale. How about that move? Ami here with such patience. The double team was there, but no panic. Just waited to see where the defense was going to move or react to and find the openings. Seven straight for the Gamecocks. Oregon State has struggled to score tonight. Just 27% from the field. They were held to five points in the second quarter. And get that out of here. Aaliyah Goodman. Corner three. That's what Goodman's going to have to do. And a lot of times, Oregon State can weave the ball through the paint, but then find your shooters out on the perimeter. Just the second made three pointer. They are two for 12. They had missed six straight before she hit that. You see Ellie Mack. She is going to stay inside. Rebuild, got to knock that one down. What has been the difference in South Carolina from the first quarter to now? Spacing. The spacing and recognizing where the help and how Oregon State is crowding the paint. Where's the help from and finding the open person? Goodman way off the mark. Winner moves on to the Sweet 16 and gets Georgia Tech. You see Ellie Mack is guarding Bree Beal, but she's not guarding Bree Beal because she is just staying in the paint. She's going to bring a double team to where whoever gets the ball inside. Here goes Henny. Free throw line. Leticia and me here, post patience in recognizing the defense is there. Doesn't matter. She gets around and has South Carolina in part of it. She is on deck. Paige Becker's coming up. Coming up next on the NCAA Women's Championship. Second round continues. Syracuse and UConn. We will get you to that game when we're done with South Carolina, Oregon State. Also, Oklahoma State, Stanford. That one's over on ESPN2. All games also available on the ESPN app. Paige Becker's 24 points in her first NCAA tournament game of her career. That is the most in the first game of a tournament career for a UConn player. Well, and she's going to have to really bring it tonight because there's a possibility 
that Nika Mule could not be available. She tweaked her ankle in the first round games, which means Paige Becker's gonna have to carry the mail, especially full time at that point guard spot. Well, they have needed her in clutch situations this season, and she has delivered that first shot. The first one that comes to mind is that shot against Tennessee late in the game to beat the Lady Vols in Knoxville. After she had to leave the game because she had a little bit of an injury and then miraculously comes back in, has the presence of mind, shot clock running down, and knocks down that three. Big time player, one of those four finalists for the Naismith Player of the Year. Well, it took South Carolina a minute, but they have kind of found that rhythm. They've only allowed five points to Oregon State in the second quarter. Beavers have scored nine points here in the third. I think South Carolina and Oregon State, State, they know, you know, it's win or go home. Sweet 16 is at stake. And right now, South Carolina in control. Zaya Cook into double figures. Oh, the Gamecocks have hit seven of their last eight. I think Dawn Staley talked to her team. She said, looked at the bracket, said, well, in the first game against Mercer, it's going to be the post. In the second game, whoever we play, it's going to be the guards. <laughs> because <laughs> Zaya Cook and Destiny Henderson stepped up big coming into this second round. Yeah, that first round game against Mercer, there are three major post players, Boston, Saxon, and me here. They combined for 51 points, shot almost 60% from the field. We looked down at the, at the uh, score, the stat broadcast at one point, South Carolina was shooting 73% from the floor. Whew, it got heated. Boston does have 15 points in this game, just two rebounds. Taya Corsdale did pick up her third foul on that last play. Well, now Oregon State really playing with five guards. All five players on the floor, they're a threat to do that right there, knock down the three ball. And Taylor Jones in foul trouble with four fouls, so she is on the bench too. That's their post presence. Now South Carolina using clock, having to practice some discipline. Tari Saxton. <laughs> Look at Aaliyah Boston, she loved it, cheering on Saxon from the baseline. Boston, one of the team captains, along with Victoria Saxton. <laughs> oh, she's, is she trying to tee up somebody down there? Yes, she is. The foul was on Ellie Mack. And so the referees have just gathered together. Scott Ruick talking to them. Not sure what happened. We'll try to get you an answer here. We want to remind you, though, here's a look ahead to the NCAA Women's Championship. We have got you covered. You bet multiple courts. Cameras everywhere, all the way up through the championship game, Sunday, April 4th at 6 Eastern on ESPN. They've packed in two courts here in the Alamo Dome. We're on one of them. Twice the games, twice the fun. I am so thrilled. They figured out a way in order to carry out this NCAA tournament. So far, it has been very entertaining, very competitive. Meher is going after the ball. Yeah, they're looking to see when Corsdale got hit in the eye. It, I don't think it was anything malicious. 
she was just going after the basketball. After review, the contact is not upgradable. Yeah, so nothing extra there. It was just incidental contact. Victoria Saxton is going to the free throw line. Two. This Oregon State team came into the tournament playing some of its best basketball of the season, but they've just struggled to get the shot to fall tonight. Well, and a lot of that has to do with the length and the defensive intensity that South Carolina has brought. It's gotten Taylor Jones in some foul trouble. She's got four fouls, not in right now. It's a 12 point per game scorer, just seven points. Only played 11 minutes. Well, and also getting on the glass, South Carolina out rebounding Oregon State 36 to 22. South Carolina is the fourth best rebounding team in the nation. And they get Letitia and me here on a foul underneath. <laughs> I don't think Don ever likes a call or agrees with the call from the official when it should change a possession. Last five shots Oregon State has taken have been from behind the arc. Just 18% though from three point land. Saxon took all of that and then some. She is just the eraser on that back row for South Carolina. And we've talked about how important she is. And she's been playing much better in the postseason. Up to Sasha Goforth. Loses control, four seconds left on the clock here in the third quarter. <laughs> Aliyah Goodman, yes at the buzzer, Goodman gets it, a little life there for the Oregon State Beavers. 12 points tonight. She's been aggressive, she's found her spots, and she also turned up her defense for the Gamecocks. Destiny Henderson averages 12 points a game. She leads them in assists, steals, and three-point shooting percentage. South Carolina started taking control of this game in the second quarter. They only allowed five points and really turned up that defense. And did a better job of taking care of the basketball, even though there was a turnover there and being patient offensively and really reading this zone that Oregon State was playing. Taylor Jones back in the game. She has four fouls, but they need her. Now with Taylor Jones, with those four fouls, Amir here instead of stepping out, step in and post up. Austin gets her own miss. Boston just continues to work. Well, the thing that she does on her offensive rebounding is she keeps pursuing it and she keeps the ball high. Gonna be a foul on a me here. Now first quarter, 
18 points for Oregon State, 14 for South Carolina. It was close, but look how much out South Carolina has outscored them since then. 48 to 18, excuse me, 41 to 18. Well, in South Carolina, in that first quarter, not as productive, but once they started establishing paint points, not a, every, every possession doesn't have to be a shot in the paint, but play through the paint. That'll make the defense collapse, and then you create opportunities on the perimeter. Boston gave it up. Count the bucket for Taylor Jones. Aaliyah Boston whistled for her third. Well, and Jones, good body control there. Destiny Littleton tried to take the charge, but Jones under control, able to get to the finish and get to the free throw line. You know, Oregon State, they brought in that three-quarter court trying to press, trap, Turn South Carolina over. They've got to try to create some more possessions for themselves. They can't allow South Carolina just to use the shot clock. We'll swing it to Beal for three. She's got one of those tonight. Shout out to Bree Beal, though. Ten rebounds. That's her third 10-plus rebound game this season. Oregon State still going for twos, but at some point they've got to try to you know, use their strength. We talked about it. They are one of the best three-point three -point shooting teams in the country. Taylor Jones has been smart to not, not get that fifth foul called. Off the pick and roll. There you go, Jones. And another chance, Sasha, go for it. South Carolina's got to be careful. Oregon State, could they start forcing turnovers? That's why Don Staley calling that timeout. Take care of the ball. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? On a 9-2 to two run, still lots of work to do, but Scott Ruick has done a ton of work on this Oregon State program. Since 2010, three Pac-12 regular season titles. They were the 2016 Pac-12 tournament champions, four Sweet 16 appearances, and of course, everybody remembers that run to the 2016 Final Four, the very first time Oregon State made a, an appearance in the Final Four. He has built this program, and he has got a lot of talent that will be coming back, too. Well, I love his philosophy in recruiting. He said that you know, a lot of times when he's recruiting players, he is recruiting them to a culture, and he wants to have players on his team that he would be willing to take a cross-country road trip with. That he, They're interesting. They talk to him. And he said he also is building for a three-hour vacation. And what he's talking about is having players that he would like to be around for three hours in practice, that they work hard and that they enjoy being there. And how much of a difference does that make, too, in a situation like COVID when you have that, that pressure to be responsible, to not go outside of your COVID bubble, to only be with your teammates? I mean, you want those type of people. Well, and you've got that in Aaliyah Goodman. She has been such a great leader for Oregon State this season. The senior that Scott Ruick talks about always bringing that positive attitude and kept the spirits high for Oregon State. And he credited her along with Taya Corsdale for keeping this team together in check, even when they had that 29-day shutdown back in January. You 
Yeah, and he, and he has such a positive attitude in everything that he talks about and with the team. And even in talking about during the shutdown, you know, he was very complimentary of how the players handled it. He said he thought it was tougher on him than it was on them because they were keeping his spirits lifted as well. Yeah, he said this team controls what they can control. They're never bothered by anything. They just go with it. Right, you look at the great players that he has recruited. Sydney Weiss. You remember Ruth the Hammer Hamlin, his player. Helped him get to the final four. Was that 2016? It was, yes. And there's Aaliyah Goodman, that that senior that has kept them together. She is first in Oregon State history in career three-point percentage, third in career made threes. Let's go. Yeah, this year she led the Pac-12 in three-point percentage and number two in the NCAA. Grew up going to Oregon State games and now got to be an Oregon State Beaver. You know, South Carolina, though, they have had to regroup. They really got all on the same page going into the SEC tournament, now carrying this into the NCAA tournament. Man, they were sharp against Mercer, just dominating on the glass, playing through their post game with Oregon State really crowding that paint, crowding that lane area. The guards have had to do some production but they have so many different weapons. There's one of them, Zaya Cook. She is in double figures tonight with 10 points. You mentioned the glass against Mercer. They tied a school record in the NCAA tournament with 52 rebounds in that game. South Carolina's got 45 rebounds tonight. We still got four minutes left to go. Rebuild getting Three. another rebound. <laughs> 10, excuse me, 11 rebounds for Bree Beal. I think the rebounding is, the rebounding and defense keeps Bree Beal on the floor. Not that she can't score, she can. But when you have a rebounding guard to go along with a Victoria Saxon and Aaliyah Boston rebounding inside, that's tough. That's why they're fourth in the nation in rebounds. Speaking of which, another chance. The patient has missed its last seven shots, though. Did you see Don Staley talking to Destiny Henderson about execution? <laughs> and the money shot goes straight inside to Aaliyah Boston. Count it. Clock's running down. The no-look pass and Aaliyah Boston with the little baby hook. I like it. And I think there was a technical foul just assessed to Scott Ruick. Taylor Jones has fouled out. Jones with 13 points, four rebounds, has been in foul trouble most of the night, but really props to her this season, has elevated her game. She's just a sophomore. Yeah, she came in. And now Don Staley has also double technicals, one assessed to each coach.
Okay, so yeah, so no technical shots because there were both te technical fouls assessed to each head coach. Those offset. These are the foul shots because Aaliyah Boston was fouled in the act of shooting. I can understand the frustration because Scott Ruick, she, he relies so heavily on Taylor Jones and that being her fifth foul. Well, both of these programs have made it to the Sweet 16 the last four seasons, but Oregon State's chances dwindling. For South Carolina, it would be their seventh straight appearance in the Sweet 16. Well, it's gotta be rewarding for South Carolina, especially for all the teams that are able to advance after not even having an opportunity to compete in the NCAA tournament last season. There's so many coaches talking about gratitude and appreciation just for the opportunity. You got a whole new appreciation for what you do and the opportunity to play after the shutdown last year. Yeah, this time last year, we weren't playing basketball. I was at home wishing that they were, I can tell you that. Me too. Go forth, banks it in. Two minutes to go. Winner moves on to face Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has battled on winning against West Virginia. Nell Fortner has the Yellow Jacket still dancing. South Carolina just patient. And when they are, they don't rush things. They keep good spacing. They have so many different options. Inside, outside, off the bounce. Well, South Carolina turned things around after a close first quarter. They started to pull ahead, only allowed five points in the second quarter and timeout will be called for a substitution well the ncaa men's basketball championship sweet 16 begins saturday on cbs and tbs or you can stream games on the march madness live app from anywhere for more information on game times and networks go to ncaa.com South Carolina on the brink of going to their 11th Sweet 16. But Oregon State, they have had uh, a lot of adversity this season. They have stayed together. They have put themselves in the position to be here, playing in the second round. They have nothing to hang their heads about. Five seconds on the shot clock for Carolina. Gonna be here, got stuck. Turns into an easy bucket for Oregon State, Jasmine Simmons. Now South Carolina just needs to use the shot clock. And that shouldn't do it. Oregon State came into this tournament playing some great basketball, but it will be South Carolina advancing as South Carolina steps up and takes the charge. Alyssa Weselick 
folks. Savannah Samuel will take the shot here. 5.6 seconds left. Sweet 16s, how sweet it is for South Carolina. They advance with a 59 to 42 win over Oregon State. Their 11th Sweet 16 overall, seven in a row. And it's been a balanced attack. We saw in the first round of games, it was the bigs inside. In the second round, the guards. You had Destiny Henderson step up big. You had rebounding coming from Bree Bill. So many weapons for South Carolina. Three players finish in double figures led by Elite.